Welcome, welcome, beautiful Paris Saint Germain family, to episode two of PSG Monthly. This time, we have David here as the guest. Welcome, David. Yo, yeah, what's up, man? How you doing, chat? How you doing? And how you doing, you too? So, okay. if you had to summarize the month of February, how would you summarize it? I'll summarize it by saying we're still unbeaten, baby. We're still unbeaten for a while, man. We're still one of the only clubs in Europe to be unbeaten. February reminds me of no losses, man. We got some up and down in gameplay, how we played, but no losses till today, man. Do you think? That's, 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 do you think this has February. been the toughest month when you look at fixtures, playing away, missing players, and so on? I say like this is this has been like the toughest month in the sense that we have missed a lot of players, like you just said. But and also is like it's also down to like um it it being the Champions League weekend and being Champions League time. So like also much so, and also like like with also later stages for the French Cup and everything. So we're, we're also facing like all this like adversity with how we're, we're building our squad, man. With Nuno being back and stuff, I think February is like is our like purple like our black patch in sense that we haven't really seen the best of PSG to like the later stage. Maybe in March, April, we'll have we'll see better better PSG. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Because. February, we also faced the Afcon. We also faced um, um, Asian Cups. We we all Hakimi, Nuno, Hakimi, Makangi Lee coming back. Like February was just, just a mix, just a little. It mixed with everything, man. We had everything, but but we made it work, man. We made it work. We made, somehow, somehow, Lucha made it work, which I commend him for. Yeah, I mean, going into the the Strasbourg game away, I mean, when I look at the table, we're so much up. And I think it's it's hard sometimes for our players to have the motivation, have the hunger like to put out like a 10 out of 10 masterclass. It's like they're saving it for, for the more important games, as you mentioned, with the Coupe de France and the Champions League and so on. Because from what I remember in that Strasbourg game, as soon as we were tuning up, like we stopped caring. Or would you say that the opposition cared more than us? I would say the opposition care more. I just like you said, so there was some that they stopped caring that hunger. Now that what pisses me because I feel like we should be always. But again, you're right. We have we're still all competition. Get us saving their energies down for those important competition. But I think that's why I would want Lucho to like to to save his best eleven for the important matches and all the matches that that the best eleven could would not care. The bench player should should. To like, no, he should like sub up every starter, but so, <clears throat> some bench players should feature in in these stages of the matches where they can actually like yeah. close out matches and prevent injuries and stuff. I mean, we we often talk about having you know good squad depth, a lot of more players. Like before, we remember the Champions League tie last season versus Bayern's second leg. Our substitutes that we wanted to impact the game when we were down were Bichiabu and Ward and Zaira Emery. Two academy graduates. Was this season? It's it's filled with many more players. But would you still say that our bench is weak? At least weak as it should be. I'll still say our bench isn't. It's it's not up to not up to the level I wanted to. Because I I still want like in a sense where like we could bring more pace off the bench <coughs> off the bench. Yeah. I think I will. I only like because again. What like most? What I would like in in a perfect world is for us to have like yeah, okay. we can bring off like two, three quick players off against tired legs, which can impact the game. Because again, nobody wants to chase. So, no one wants to chase like um, so so quick as like a damage hour in in eighty eight minutes. You know, you're you're already been chasing Mbappe for like full one one full eighty eight minutes already. Yeah. So I think our bench is our bench is better than what it was last year and uh, from previous years. But I, would, I think I would want it better this summer, man. So do you think it's about quality or is it more about profiles? As you said, profiles, like, profiles, profiles, yeah. profiles, profiles. I think we have we have we, profiles. We have enough quality on our bench, but not we're not the right profiles. We have enough. We have, we have enough midfielders for our bench, but not enough like attacking reinforcements. Like someone like Asensio, I would love if Asensio to be like a midfielder replacement rather rather than an attacking replacement because he lacks the yeah. pace to to be dynamic and change games. I mean, now that he's injured once again and out for the upcoming Champions League squad versus Real Sociedad, how would you like talk about his stint so far at PSG? I mean, he was a starter 
amazing in the beginning of the season, like those four, first four or five games, even in preseason was impressive. Then got injured, never came back into the starting 11, started to come back, but wasn't as good. I mean, do you see a future for Asensio at PSG? I, I see, for me, I believe that I would give new signings, or I give him say like a year plus, but I think with the injuries back to back, like he's not just, he's not getting any younger. I think we should we should start worrying from next year if, if it continues. Like I still believe Asensio has a future for this club. I still believe like he could be very important for like how we play in, in the near future. So he brings that, that he brings that experience that we we lack, we dearly lack. Yeah, so I, I still trust in Asensio. But my thing is my thing for Asensio is that I want more from him, and I want more in the sense that. Like whenever I look for like stars, like star players in the squad, I, I want to like think about sense. I don't, I don't think about like only Barcola, then Booz, then Booz and Bappe. I'll also, 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 we talk about his name. I don't want his name to be like a meme when we when we talk about him. I want to like him to like a top candidate. If that makes sense. One hundred percent. I mean, he's versatile and was. I mean, wasn't as impactful as other players at Madrid, but he was still very impactful during, I mean, them winning Countess of Champions Leagues. And as you said, he has the leadership, he has the IQ, he has all of that. I think he also has to do a lot with adaptation to Ligue 1. You know, sometimes the first five games can show you something different because maybe he was overperforming in the beginning. But would you say that he's not a fit? Into Ligue 1. I mean, we, we talked about this last season, and even this season, that La Liga players coming to Ligue 1, they always become worse. Like, it's, it's really yeah. hard to become better. It, 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 it's down to, to how physical Ligue 1 is, but I, have, I got hope for Ascension, man. I, I feel like... Like, with the way... I, I I, my problem with him is that I think Luther is, not, is doing him a disservice by throwing him on the wing, man. In the sense that we all know League One is, a, is a, like it's a pace and power league. Like, yeah. it, it requires some technical, but it's a very, very physical league. Messi even said it himself. But the thing is, like someone like Asensio, mean, of course, you, like, you you don't want him running like you don't want him on the wings against like pace and power wingers when he you know he's not the most he's not the quickest player, man. I feel like whenever Lucho th- chucks him on the wing, he's doing is him doing him a disservice rather than in the midfield where he can at least compete with his technical prowess and everything. Yeah. yeah. So There's I feel like, other but the thing like other than Asensio, we we we, we don't chuck in. Like I mean, Kangia hasn't played that much because of the Asian Cups and the and the other Asian competition. I forgot the name. Yeah, so, so I we don't need really that much winger options from what I've seen from off the bench. From what I've seen from Lucho, so I think that's why Lucho hasn't like he's just using Asensio alone. Other than Colomani, whose tech, whose technical prowess is garbage. So, yeah. So I, think, I think it's just down to not, us not having the, the right profile. So that's why he's forcing us to play the wings. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, like, I, I think it also has to do, like, we have a lot of midfielders. We have Fabian Ruiz, we have Vitinha, we have Ugarte, we have Warren. I mean, Kangi Lee likes to, like, Lucho likes to put Kangi Lee there. So there aren't that many spots in the midfield. Whereas when it comes to winger positions, apart from Dembele and Barcola, the only ones that could, Play there are Asensio and Colomani, pretty much. Or yeah. uh, as we saw when he chucked uh, Gonzalo on the left wing. <laughs> yeah, Gonzalo playing down like Darren Nunes in the Liverpool <laughs> years, yeah. <laughs> Lucho is funny, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're, we're linked to already some wingers in the future, so I think that could change with, yeah. with like, in the near future. So hopefully, like, we have more, like, the right profiles for the right time for Lucho. Yeah. Add, add, more weapon, more, add more weapons for him to use in their, in their future. Yeah. I mean, if we come to the, the 3-1 victory over Brest in the Coupe de France, advancing to the quarterfinals for the first time in two years, uh, three years, what would you blame those two years? Because before, we were stat padding the cup. And if we lost... We lost, like, in the final, at least. Apart from that year versus Guingamp. What would you say the past two years in the Coupe de France was, was the issue? Like, how it, was, it, was, it, it was the lack of pre- preparation and the, the lack of unity at that time. I feel like during those times, we were, just, we were, we were like, right on a good flow. But I think when, when we were met, like, we were, we also, it was also down to the coach again, man. So I don't blame it with the squad. It was also down to the coach. I, did, I think, like, 
the coaches at those times had the right mentality going to the competition. They, they thought they, they could like, okay, we have Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, we could just steam all these people. But they weren't ready for like the passion that all these teams who love to be PSG and who are love to invest in this friend, the cup, man. So I feel like it was down to to both the coach, the coach and the players, man. We they weren't right at the same time. Also, the lineups, man. I don't know if you could pull up the lineups right now for. Well, I mean, we can. Or can you read up the lineups because since it's going, it's going on Spotify, I, even the lineup, I don't remember like if we even feel our best level at those times. Down to because again, we also faced injuries at, at those times. Yeah, so I feel like or, or down to like lack of preparation, a lack of seriousness in the part of the squad at that at that moment. At that moment. I mean, the recent lineup we had versus Marseille uh, in the Coupe de France when we lost last year was Donnarumma in goal, Hakimi, Marquinhos, mm-hmm. Sergio Ramos, Nuno Mendes, uh, Danilo Pereira, Fabian Ruiz, Vitinha Verratti, and then Neymar and Messi up top. I think uh, Kylian Mbappé was missing the game due to an injury, probably. So, I mean, we pretty much played our best starting eleven. It was just a huge issue. Uh, playing that Neymar and Messi up top because I mean they had no outlet. It was like having two playmakers yeah. without a goal scorer. Yeah, there, there was no outlet and there was no pace up up front compared to what we have this year, man. Yeah, like compared to this year, we we don't only have Mbappe, we have Barcola and then Booz who can run at defenders and like yeah, I mean Neymar and Messi could run at defenders, but they didn't have that that stream pace to beat them after beating their man compared to the Barcola and yeah, compared to Barcola and um, then, then Booz. So I think it was also down to that. So like, yeah. So I think it was also like again, pro, poor planning from the coach on the coach. Uh, Someone the coach on the floor director Luis Campos. He didn't give us enough like attacking reinforcements compared to what we have this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's down to the wages or down to whatever. So we didn't have that. I think we were, that's what we were missing last year. We, we were missing that needed pace besides Mbappe compared to this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Another thing, I mean, as, as we were talking about, when you have those star players, the aim has always been the Champions League. So, I mean, this season, it feels like we're going for the quadruple, David. Whether we do it or not, at least that's our objective. That's our main, to win every competition we're competing for. Whilst last season, it's like we did our best in Ligue 1, but we still wanted the CL. Coupe de France didn't matter as much. And another thing as well I want to mention is this season under Lucho David, when we're good, we're good. When we're bad, we're not that bad. Like we still win games or at least draw the games. Whereas last yeah. season, when we were good, we were elite or at least elite. great. But then when oh, we were bad, bad God. <laughs> we were terrible. Disgusting. Yeah, yeah disgusting. What, what yeah, would you say the, you. the reason for that is? I think it has that. a lot like we were so reliant on just three players to do to do the ball progression, the goal scoring, the chance creation, everything. And as soon as one of them had a bad game or one of them was injured, everything just fell apart. I'll say like the difference is in the sense that compared to last season, last season when we did well and when we looked to lead, because again last season we had more playmakers. If you have more playmakers in a team, if they if again like I said, if everyone's on, on good form or everyone on their day, we look elite. But this year, since we don't have that much playmakers, and we're like, or more like a mixed blend of everything, we have like the destroyers, the, the ball carriers, the the, the the somewhat playmakers, the the, one, the people that hiding, the people that taking that talking into the half spaces, a more mix of everything. That's why, it, like, whenever like we look bad, we still have an idea what we're trying to do, and we can still win compared to like actually season where we were just like all playmakers and we lacked necessary profiles. Like we lacked the destroyer from last year. We lacked pace from last year we lacked um a ball carrier in the middle from last year as well yeah we lack we lacked an identity from last year because we were so around on eminem or like this year we're like like one day it could be Bar- barcola who's turning up or the next day mbappe who who turn up or like then booze who, who save us and carry us on the right side yeah so that's like we have more options compared this year which which, which people may not agree with me but i feel like we have more options this year with the way we played than last year we played I, mean, I feel like if, if you took out one of the M&Ms from last year, we won't see the PSG of that time. But if you, this year, if you t- I mean, if you take, if you take out Mbappe, because you, see, because you see what PSG is trying to do. We should, we should pr- press how we press. We should, do a, we should press, we're going to press how we press normally without Mbappe. We're going we're gonna to press a pr- press with Mbappe, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, and I also think it has to do like with variety of goals. Last season, like 
every single goal we scored, it was center backs give it to Verratti. Verratti gives it to Neymar and Messi. And one of them does a bit of magic. And boom, a pass to Nuno Mendes on the outlet, to Hakimi, to Mbappe, or they score themselves. And that was like very easy to defend against. Like, you know what PSG's plan is. Give it to Mbappe. Whereas this season, as you said, maybe the goal comes from Lucas gives it to Vitinha, opens up space, and Mbappe does a bit of magic. Maybe it's, you know, the, the duo that we've been having this season, Hakimi Dembele. Maybe it's Warren running through the middle. Maybe it's, an, it's a cross from Hakimi down over the top. It's like the variation of goals we scored this season are much different from last season. And I think that's what's made us so hard to defend against. We can score from the left, from the right. I mean, we still need improvement from the center, but we can still score from the center. Whilst last season, yeah. it was so center heavy. heavy. And it's heavy, much easier yeah. to defend the center than... I don't and know. outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because on the outside, with space, you're usually putting 1v1s against Dembele and Barcola, two of the best dribblers in the entire world. And, I mean, you can stop them at least five, six times, but if they go past you, there is a really dangerous chance created. Plus, they dribble with pace. Messi and Neymar never dribble with pace. They more dribbled in tight spaces with their technique. And you just put two... Because I remember last season, David, there were so many league end teams we played. What they did was they put two players on Verratti. And then Neymar and Messi had to drop deep to help ball progress. And then we had no one in attack. And Mbappe was yeah, just... Yeah, no one in attack, line. yeah. Oh, left in the line, and yeah. That, that was happening most of the time last season. Yeah, what was this season, Lucho, he's, he's forcing our defenders to play make. Like, look at what he's made with Hakimi. Hakimi has, like, the fourth most touches in the team. Like, I think seventh most shock rating actions in the entirety of Europe. Like, he's made him part of the ball progression. Like, he's one of the best ball progressors in Europe this season. Our centre-backs... I mean, Marquinhos has been playmaking or at least trying to do that more than he has ever done. Obviously, with profiles like Lucas and Lucas Beraldo have helped a lot. Beraldo. And with mm-hmm. Nunes' mm-hmm. return. So, like, our defenders are now part of, you know, the attack. Last season, it was like the defenders, they were just there to defend the counter-attack. Defend all Europe. And we needed to playmake whenever Messi and, Messi and Neymar were, were left on islands and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I agree. I do agree with that, man. I do. I, I do heavily agree with that because I remember we had arguments on the pod whenever like one or two players were like locked up out of game and we had no op- we had no answers to unlock them and yeah. stuff. Would Jeff said uh-huh. any team has like locked us like that? I mean, the teams that we struggle against, David. It's not that they lock up one of our players. It's more that they say a bit deeper and we have some issues, you know, penetrating that deep lock. Yeah. But like yeah, no team, yeah. like maybe Newcastle in the beginning of the season and Sociedad recently gave us problems. I, w- I won't say really. I won't say really say Newcastle because again when we watched the game again, I said like it, was, it was just down to our mistakes. When that Newcastle game happened, we like we sold, we gave them the game, and you, you, you never really want to chase a game in the Champions League. So I won't say they, they locked us up. We, I, th- I feel like we gave them the tie before we could actually punish them. If that yeah. makes sense. Because when, cause when it came to the park, it was still the same level. I mean, other than one or two omissions from their team, we cooked them. Yeah. But again, I think it was just the PSG, we, we, just, we don't take our chances when we need to take our chances. And we don't kill the game off when we can kill the game off. I feel like once we learn from that, we would, we would be a bit, much better team. I, think, I feel like even in today's right, even in the games we play right now, we don't, like, Mbappe will have a chance. I mean, he's not, again, it's football. He's not meant to, he's not meant to score every chance. When Bappe, Bappe will have a chance here or there where he doesn't like bury the chance. We, we should, where if he does bury that, those chances, he ends, he, he kills the game off. He doesn't let the other team come back. Yeah. Um, and I mean, ending it here in the Coupe de France, we obviously recently won against Brest 3 1. Good performance. And now we have Nice. And if we beat Nice, we'll be facing Rennes. And if we beat Rennes, I think we'll probably face Lyon. In the Coupe de France final, I'm I mean, this I'm like the that. toughest route I've I've seen. Like, you got to be the best. To, to, you got to be the best. Be the best, man. I know, but at least give us one farmer. Give us a farmer. Give us a mid team. Because now, like, w- like Coupe de France and Champions League, like both are extremely crucial. And so, so, I don't know how so, much we'll care about Ligue 1 now. 
So, so it then forces Lucha to rotate his squad for the for, for this competition. Yeah, he allowed we game. We have, we have a strong enough bench now. It forces him to use the bench that was given to him. I think that's why he's not playing. I mean, we also we also facing a lot of injuries. I mean, we're facing too many center back in, issues. Yeah, but I think this is why I was worried. Like, why we, I, I believe we should, like I was worried because the screener stuff. Because already we already know that Danilo is already of age where he can pick injuries here and there. Now Martinez is not picking injuries here and here. Now it looks like because Barado is playing more minutes than he's meant to be playing. Like, so I think like we need and that Mukele is not a con, Mukele is not a convincing as a center back. Like, it's kind of sad. I, I was I expected more from him. So I feel like he forces Lucha to find like a new way to play with the players given to him. I think now with um, Nuno back, I think Lucas and Barado will probably be the makeshift center backs for now until Martinez and Danilo come back from whatever injuries or muscle muscle no, um, problems. Both, both Martinez and Danilo are in the upcoming squad versus Sociedad. Do you think it's out? Do you think do you think um do you want one or, or or two of them them will start? I mean, I, I made the preview today, and I had I, I don't I don't think Danilo will start because he didn't even train on Sunday. Marquinhos at least trained on Sunday, so you, and, and they will be training the, a bit today. So, so you're looking at the um, we know we both know Barado starting right because he started the other game. So up in up you put Barado in seven eleven. Oh, one hundred percent. The def, I mean, the, yeah. we know the midfield and the attack, the defense, Hakimi. Beraldo and then Lucas Hernandez and then the last one is either you play Nuno Mendes or you play Marquinhos. Well, what do you think Lucio will go with? Do you think he'd be like, okay, Marquinhos two days training, is that enough? I would go for Nuno. I understand they want to take it really easy, David. Yeah. We are in a, in a context, in a big game. I know, <laughs> David, do you think Lucio's watched uh, Marquinhos Champions League knockouts away tapes? <laughs> Yeah, I think he he's seen Marquinhos shake too oh, much in the race. Newcastle. Yeah. He saw versus Newcastle. And he Milan. saw versus Newcastle. <laughs> yeah, so I think he should avoid that at all costs. Man. I, I'm already trying to see Marquinhos start shaking like a hamster, man. So I think, yeah, I hope it's Nuno, Lucas, Barado, and Hakimi, man. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't want to. Really, yeah, I don't see. I don't see Marquinhos or Danilo who just come back. I don't like seeing players who come back from injuries because once they make a mistake, they're like, oh, I was injured. Like, okay. Yeah, I was yeah, injured. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to see that. And you so, were talking before about like <coughs> rotating squads. I mean, the little game we had: no Warren, no Mbappe, no Barcola, no Hakimi, and yeah, I mean, yeah, no Marquinhos. It, it, see, I think what people find the problem with rotating squads is that you like you need to rotate the squad to to a certain degree but right? well, i think I, when when Lucho does the rotation he he oh, he overdoes it i think he changes the whole 11 you you want to at least if you want to keep the same identity of like keep a squad you must at least rotate like just three four players you don't you don't sub off you don't just chuck so um Zayami right back or chuck, like no i think Soler should never play in midfield man so let's look at that that right back stuff he should not be in the midfield he should, he should not be an option in the midfield I feel like Kangli should have played. It was little like I think Kangli should have played that game. In my opinion, instead of Soler. But yeah. Uh, I, I no, I I think he. Will, if you're talking about the little game, uh, Kangli was rested because he had just come back from the Asian Games, so he got like extra rest. But he was there watching the game, but he wasn't yeah. working at that. Yeah, time. I, feel like, I feel like he should play even the Asian game. I don't think he played in that the last Asian game because the, the, the incident with Son. If that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, so I think he should have played the, the, ma- the match when we were, when you know, deck instead of Soler because I, I, I don't know about you guys that listen to this, but can you, I don't believe like Soler has, any, Soler has anything to our midfield other than, in the, so I was repping him last year, man, as a troll, but I don't think he has anything to our squad other than just being Spanish, man. Yeah. I, I actually remember, you know, the Monaco game? He had the crazy one too with uh, Asensio. You remember that one? Yeah, that was the only thing he did in the game. Like he's so, <laughs> and especially in the league, and if you're gonna play as a midfielder, you're gonna face a lot of duels. Soler can't win a single duel against the uh, Sissokos and Traores of this league. Like, it, it, it's, it's no point worth even trying. Uh, but that's why we gotta reshuffle this summer. 
we had one summer transfer window is not enough. And January, we barely were able to do what we wanted. I think Solar could have been sold if we could have gotten the place we wanted. Uh, but in the summer, a lot of reshuffling, as you said, the Soler, the Mukiele. There's there's some certain players at this club that we know. The, the teammates don't rate them. Lucha doesn't rate them. And we as fans don't rate them. Yeah. But they can still, I mean, step up here and there. Um. I mean, with the upcoming game versus Sociedad coming up tomorrow, we can we can talk about the recent Sociedad game. What rating would you give that performance? I'll give it a 7.5. Because in the first half, I didn't like how we played in the first half. I didn't like how Moreno had the shot. I didn't like how, like, they were, they were, they were like, they, again, they had the park, man. Like, you meant, you meant to be scared when you come to the park, man. I feel like teams should be scared when they come to the park. They seem like they're complete. They had, the, they had the, the, the gall to play their football, man. So I was upset. So, but second half, we turned we turned it up. We changed how we played. I mean, we had, again, we had a chance in the first half where Bobby could have killed the game off, but he missed. Just stuff like that, man. We just got to finish our food, man. Kill off our food before stuff happens, man. We start giving team. I'll give you a 6, like a 7.5. I feel like we should have done better. I feel, yeah. I feel like the scoreline should have been bigger than what it is. But even the second half, how did you feel about the second half? I, was, the second half, I loved the second half. We took, I mean, we took control. That's what, that's what we showed. We were PSG. When um, Vitinha went, when we changed to a double pivot, Vitinha was the six. Yeah, I feel like we did, we did so much better, man. And how, how do you see the second leg going? Do you see it being more of the first half, more of the second half? Well, a, a mixture? The second half, the second leg, I think. We could we could go like I have a prediction of like oh again so so that one, one I have a prediction of, of us winning two one I say I give them one goal in the sense that they're home and but again that that they, they, have, they don't score enough goals that they don't score enough but I don't want to jinx it whether whether like, they beat us on but I'll say like we we haven't showed that's like we are good away from home in the UCL especially I feel like our best away performance. It was probably a one-one draw against the um, one-one draw with, with Dortmund this season. Yeah, but then when when we went to Milan, Leal happened. When we, when Newcastle Newcastle happened, but I, I said I'll give it to Dortmund. The Dortmund like away in UCL, and again, some of our players like for example Marquinhos sh- shit their pants or poop their pants in big matches like this. So I won't, I'm not I'm not expecting like a blowout blow because. With with, with, the player, with the type of players that I know we have, but, but it, it won't shock me if it does happen. But I, I do so have us winning like what two one two zero. I don't think nothing more, nothing less. Mm. W- w- one thing I like a pattern I like to follow is how we've improved the way. Because first one Newcastle four one absolutely disgusting. One of the worst. I mean they were extremely clinical, but one of the worst results I've like seen as a PSG fan alongside maybe the, the Barca game. I remember when we lost 5-1 versus Lille in Ligue 1. It's not like, I, I don't like considering that many goals. But then after that, the 2-1 against Milan, we should have probably won that game. Maybe drawn it. I think a draw would have been a fair result because Mbappe had like two big chances in the first half. Then Bele hit the crossbar. But then in the Dortmund game, David, like we should have won that game. We should have scored at least four goals that game. So at least yeah. I'm, I'm following the improvement that we're steadily improving away, and it takes time. But our biggest issue, David, has been just you know taking our chances, as you said. But that's what I loved about the recent Sociedad game. We only had, I believe, one point seven xG, no, one point three xG versus Sociedad, David, and we got two goals, and that only came in the second half. Was against Newcastle at home, we had 4.5 XG, scored only one last minute penalty. Dortmund, we had like three XG, only scored one. Do you th- have you seen a clinicality improvement from PSG just, just based in, in the Champions League? I mean, it's only one yeah. game to go off, but. I mean, it's just what, like you said, it's just one game to go off of. So I think. Tomorrow will give us more, more of a bigger picture to see how we good, how good we are away from home. I mean, I, I like yeah, I still expect us like again. 
like you said, because again, against Dortmund again, Kolomani had a good chance, Mbappe had a, like a chance where like so Sule saved like made a miracle tackle, a miracle save off the line. So yeah, I feel like if we're not more clinical, we do, and we have and we do a clear enough chance, we should like in theory do do way better in front of goal. So it just takes it just for for the team tomorrow to show us that okay, now there's an improvement. Let's let's see, basically. And uh, who, like, what are your expectations? Out of my expectation for the last game, like, who are you? So like, my, oh, you gotta perform better, or you gotta do better. Oh, the the, the midfield has to do with so much better, man. Like, so much. It can be so much technical ways in the midfield, like as Prince would always say. Like, whenever, like, it, it, I want, like, I think if my my latest retweet right now was the. Was the what and Bernardo Silva did yesterday, like when doing the Manchester derby, not, oh, to, yeah, not to bring so up Manchester, yeah. bring up yeah. hands, like, like, like bring up exactly like, like we need, we need someone on the pitch, like a midfielder, someone to, to, just to take control, man. Just to remind you, like, just to remind, to remind all the players, like, we're better than these people, man. Why be playing like this if we know we're better than them? Like, we're almost better than them. We play for PSG. This is PSG. Like, we, we need we need that we need that swagger back in our game, man. We need to, we need to remind people like who we are, man. I think someone in the midfield, whether it's Ugarte, whether it's Fabian, Fabian is like is the oldest player. I think he had to take take that role of being the senior midfielder, man. He, yeah, like yeah. able to sit on the ball and take his play. Like he's everyone's just a doll is his Spanish teammates, man. Like he already dunked on them once, so he can he able to dunk on them again. One hundred percent. I mean, we saw that in the like Champions League group stage. That player was Warren. Warren was the guy that in tough times. He did great stuff. Newcastle away, four, four nil, three nil down. He made that beautiful assist and just had an overall better performance than everybody else on the pitch. Dortmund away, Mbappe couldn't score, Barcola couldn't score, Kurumani definitely couldn't score, and Warren scored the goal. But against Sociedad, it was completely different. Like I, I think he was the weakest PSG player that entire game, if we're counting the entire 90 minutes. But it's yeah. just, we shouldn't be expecting that from him. Warren should it, not be it, it, that guy. Yeah, it should be it Fabi- should. Fabiane. It's Fabi- it's Fabian. Like 28, no. He's 28, man. He, he, he meant to be the senior midfielder. He's more, meant to be more lifting everyone up, not just not the youngsters doing his job. I feel like, so, so, to speak on Warren, man, like, I love how he's playing for us week in, week out, but I would like it to, like, to reduce with the way I'm seeing how... I don't know if it's the way Barca is managing Pedri and stuff, but I don't want, like, that decision where, like, his body starts crashing out, like, Pedri. Like, I'm seeing, like, Pedri cannot even play, like, a string of games. That picking up I don't want that to happen. I don't want yeah. that to ever happen to Warren. I don't know, because... I, I don't, like... I don't, cause Warren's a very, 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 very bright time. He He's a jack-of-all-trades. I mean, he can do everything. Playmake, he can yeah. do everything. But I feel like... And he's just 17. I feel like he should still play a very, a very good amount. But in the perfect world, I don't think he should be starting every match. Not because he's not good enough. He just I don't want his body to like. I just don't want the the world to be robbed of a talent like how the world's robbed of like of ever seeing like Pedri hit his Pedri, Pedri ever hit, reaching his prime. If he stays at Barcelona, yeah, because the injuries are racking up so much for Pedri, man. I ain't sad out now. But but I think like Lucha has realized that mixed with Warren has not been in the best form recently because. I mean, you you brought up the stat first in the group uh, that he hasn't started the fa- past four league end games. He will still go and yes. start this game, and maybe after this rest, he will be back to his best probably. And David, there's actually I one so. one like stat or like they did a survey or I don't know the exact word for it, but they did it, and they found mm-hmm. out that you know players that play a lot of games when they're young get a lot like very injury prone when they get older. If you can think of examples, you can bring them up. Obviously, Neymar, Neymar is perfect. Uh, Neymar. Playing since he was 16, game in, game out for Santos. Like, he had to play. He had to carry them. And then he got injury cooked, like, age 28, 27. Um, what does that even mean? Uh, Rooney. I think Rooney. He fell off really, yeah, really, really early. Why? Because he was, like, he was a starter for Everton when he was, like, 18, I think. Good players. Yeah, 16, 16, 16. 16. I think 16 or 17. Yeah. So, I mean, the, yeah. the, I, I would say the main difference between them and Warren is that Warren, I mean, he's a, he's a physical yeah, specimen. Gene, yeah, Gene, Gene's as well could play a part. 
But I just, I, I just, I'm like, I don't say I'm scared. I just don't want again with yeah. the way uh, how Warren plays and everything. Like we saw him dogging them, Bar Bar and the preseason. And so I was mm. at seven eighteen. Uh, I I just don't want the world to be robbed of a ta- of not seeing that talent reach its reach its prime, man. One hundred percent. But I think, I think with the summer and everything, more he will be able to rest and like still still have a decent amount of games. But yeah. again, prior prior to, prior to the Prior to being of this year, he was our best midfielder in the Champions League. Oh, he was our best player in the Champions League. Stats wise, performance wise, he was he was always performing in Champions League. He could say Mbappe in this, but it was the Warren goal that kept us alive in Champions League. I mean, Mbappe scored the penalty against Newcastle, but it was the Warren goal against Dortmund that kept us alive, man. Yeah, Warren had four goals and assists. Mbappe had three goals and assists, which includes two no, pens. Penalty, Th- two pens, he, exactly. And he won only one of those pens, so. Impactfulness, more than definitely. Yeah, and like I think I, I remember before fans. Newcastle when he was missing the game, so many PSG fans were like, "Oh my God, we're gonna lose. We need Warren." Like he was, he was that good that people were that good exactly. It would be such a that huge loss. Really, yeah, so I think he, I feel like he just needs to he, he just needs to be rested and mm-hmm. and go from there. And I, I think one, like, not sad thing, but, like, one thing that pushes him more into the lineup is just strictly because of his profile. We don't have yeah, a physical a ball midfielder, carry. ball carrier, as he said there in the midfield. Um, I mean, Ogarte is probably the closest thing to him, but he's more of a destroyer. He's more of a number six yeah. than a number eight. So, yeah. I mean, good luck to Warren. Let's hope for the best for him. Um, well, I don't like none of us want to really talk about this, but obviously, straight after the Sociedad game came out the news about Kylian Mbappe. Pretty much, uh, I mean, he, he t- telling Nasser, telling his teammates, telling Luis Enrique in training that he would n- not be a part of PSG after this summer and he would leave for free. Probably to Real Madrid. Nothing has been agreed upon yet, but it's obviously the only club he will go to. How how did you feel when you got those news? Like, were you shocked? Were you like, yeah, I I expected this. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's Mbappe, man. Everyone, everyone knew. I mean, everyone, everyone, everyone knew it was eventually going to happen. I feel betrayed by Mbappe, uh, like Ratiano. I don't, I don't, I feel like disrespected by him because he's going for free. But it is what it is. I, I don't like spending too much energy on Mbappe anymore. Just do you, I'll do me, man. Yeah. Like for me, I remember because I had immediately as I saw David Ornstein tweeted, people tagging me in it. I was like, all right, I need to have an emergency podcast. And my biggest thing, the entire pod, it was not him leaving, David. It was not him leaving for free. It was just the timing of all of it. Yeah, yeah, especially after we just won, exactly. And did you see the report from Santi that said he wanted to do this in January, but Nasser Bruh. didn't answer the calls and postponed the meeting one month. So this guy went to, in January. <laughs> in the beginning of the restart, tell the club president the manager and the teammates, they would not be part of PSG. So, and, and the thing w- with all of this, David, he helps Real Madrid the most because now they can freely negotiate with uh, Mbappe knowing that there's no chance PSG is, is going to come and try to renegotiate. Yeah. I mean... Then I'm like, oh, this Mbappe. So I don't like talking about it anymore. I'm already, I'm already tired of Mbappe. Yeah, I'm already tired of Mbappe. But he, he's just, he's just a weird guy, man. He, like, I don't know how you tarnish your legacy by being so foolish at the same time. But he wants to secure the bag. I guess secure the bag. He just, I just don't know how much his legacy will mean in France anymore, man. Because it's very, it's a, it's a very bitter pill to swallow. Because everything was given to you. So players like Colomani, Dembus were all signed because of you. The project was the project was made. At least give it two years. You know me. I said, like I said, I extend one more year. Then I leave, I, leave, I leave next year. Boom. After the years and everything, because you have the Olympics of PAG. Give it two years. Just give it two years. If it flops, it flops. If it doesn't flop, it doesn't flop. 
Let's give it two years, but he chose, mm-hmm. he chose to like give it one year and leave when everything's built around him. Is what it is. I but hope. You know, like you're paying for I hope like we don't face you because if we, if we do face you next year, uh, Bakula will, will, will score a hat trick on, on Madrid's head, man. So <laughs> I'll spare you. I'll, I'll spare you that war, man. Oh, Euro pocket session once again. Oh, Euro pocket see you again. So yeah, uh, that's what I'm gonna say from Bappy, man. Did you see the recent uh, reports? I, th- I think L'Equipe or the Parisian mentioned it, and I read it. And then Roman Molina came out with it today that the Mbappe clan has been paying off the ultras. And that is one of the main reasons they have been so positive uh, to Kylian Mbappe, even despite him leaving PSG. How, how do you feel? Like, I- I've never liked the ultras that much. I've always felt they are extremely ungrateful. Because, I mean, you're just fans. You're more like passionate fans. You go to the pitch all the time. You do beautiful stuff like the, the, the banners, the fireworks and all of that. But they've always, they always feel like PSG owns them something. No. If you don't like PSG, stop supporting PSG. You don't own them. You, you can't think you have a decision in the club. Like me and you, David, we don't go and try to demonstrate and say, oh, PSG should do this. No, we say our opinion. And then just hope for the best and hope Campos and Nasser are listening. Yeah. And how do you feel that them, after everything they did last year, they didn't like Messi, they showed that. They didn't like Neymar, they showed that. They even disrespected someone that everybody considers a club legend because I know some people say Neymar is not a club legend and so on. Marco Verratti, someone that everybody acknowledges as a club legend, someone that loves this club someone that is a French citizen, someone that probably after retiring will live in Paris and come to the park and watch the games. But now Mbappé, they're just, they're just quiet. And positive. Not just I mean, quiet, they're positive. They're like, oh yeah, we'll positive. give him a good farewell. Uh, in, in, I think in the home game versus, what was it? Uh, the home game versus Rennes, they had like a, a banner of Mbappé. Yeah, I mean, if if they do, if the rumors are true that he they actually like pay him, like he paying them, and that's actually that's actually very sad. I love to be bought so easily with money. Man. Do you get mad more at Mbappe doing that for you know his self image reasons or the ultra star? Oh, oh, both, both because it's, only only an insecure person will buy supporters, man. That's how I see it, man. He sounds uh, oh, that's an person. I mean, he can't he, he can't take what he dishes. So yeah, it rubbed me the wrong way because I expected more from him. But it, if that is true, then it's very rare from him to do something do something so shallow like that. So I, so couldn't couldn't that like, so can't an argument be made that Mbappe paid the ultras to kick out Mbappe to kick out Neymar? <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you you don't think about it. Like, oh, no, 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 that's Mbappe. why I'm laughing at it. I'm laughing at it because, oh, yeah. it, I mean, last season, David, last season, David, last season, David, because we know Nasser wanted to send Neymar. I had the suspicion that Nasser, why? Because Nasser didn't punish the ultras for what they did. He just said, oh, the club is against what they did. I mean, that's obvious. But, like, what I expected from Nasser last season was to pun- punish the ultras. So that way, they would never do that again. Because what they did was, I mean, even people that hate Neymar, I mean, even you, David, you, you, yeah. you, you know that. I mean, they stepped a bit over the line. I mean, his kid was there. His yeah, wife, but, he can't go to his it, fucking it, home. It, 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 yeah, his newborn kid and everything is there, man. He's over the line. I think that's, I think that's why I knew him was going because again, it's a safety hazard having crazy people around again, newborn kid and stuff. Man, no one wants to risk that. No family will feel safe. So it had to happen, man, for it, for the safety of his kids. Yeah, so I had like the the conspiracy theory that it could have been Nasser that did it because he didn't punish them after. But now that you say about Mbappe and everything we've known now, wow, it's, <laughs> wow. it's, very, it's, it's very it's very possible. I'm saying like, hmm. it all comes together now. It all comes together. Why make sense? Why nothing happened to them? Or everything. Well, well, Mbappe paying them. Man. So, so like, the ultras are like his. Uh, yeah. His bodyguards, his terrorists. He just sends them. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I remember um, he, he remember that time he did a meeting again with with the the head of the ultras. Like he gave him the jersey and everything. He did, he also went there to go talk to them every time. Yeah, so, like, he already did it. For, so he already like established that like a bond. So 
who knows? Even maybe during that meeting, exactly where he had the, the like the, the the horn and everything. He maybe already talked about like the payments, how the payments will be made, <laughs> installments, and this what they have to do. Probably give, give them Neymar's address and everything. So like, who knows? Like, you never know. Like, football is a very weird sport right now. So who knows, man? I mean. Nasser hates this entire situation. I mean, the recent report came that, oh my God, Nasser is so mad after after everything he's given to Mbappe. This is how Mbappe, this is what Mbappe does back and so on. If Nasser is really serious, he should do something about the ultras. Like last season, I remember, oh, he was such a cuck last summer. He just put uh, his tail between the legs and forgave the ultras for what they did and then listen to their promises like I've, I've no issue with us having a hectare jersey next season david my issue is that we have it because the ultras pressured the club to do it like how how can the ultras pressure the club to do stuff they indirectly pressured the club and pressured neymar to leave the club they they indirectly made verati want to leave the club or directly. Yeah. I, I just don't yeah, like dude. that they have so much power that they can... They take what happens to the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And affect, like, uh, important decisions. Because what, what the Ultras are meant to be, David, they're meant to be, like, an image of us PSG supporters, but just more passionate. You could say a bit more aggressive when they fight Marseille fans and so on. I mean, that's a positive. Fight them. They are our enemies, but don't do this to our players. But I mean, yeah, there isn't there isn't that much to say. We just have to accept the situation. This is what we yeah. as normal PSG fans do. We just accept. We don't go out and demonstrate to them. But <laughs> yeah, moving on, transfer stuff with Mbappe leaving. There is a void in the team that we need to fill. Do we need to sign yeah, a goal scorer, score. David? I think after watching the recent game, I think a goal scorer is essential with the way Lucho wants to play. Because I don't think we have enough playmaker. I think, yeah, we would see. I believe a goal scorer will sign. But I don't think, I, I think it's between two people. I think, I think it's either Osimo or Jokeres. I think Jokeres, like, tension is, is building up too much for Europe, especially, man. I think everyone, I, I mean, if, if, if people watch the the pod, like, a couple months ago, I talked about, like, Pioca is going to Lille and Monaco. Because I thought that was his level. But I'm, like, I'm seeing him being linked to Arsenal and stuff like now. So, probably those head scouts you think he can play for a big team and stuff now. So, I think it, it would be one of those two that will be bought for PSG next season. Do I want them to be bought? No, not really. Because my, my, my main focus is always going to be the midfield. I feel like the midfield needs priority. Oh, wonderful. But I don't... But do I even blame PSG right now with with Frankie Dion picking up a knock yesterday? With, with Frankie Dion, with Frankie Dion and Pedro picking knock like a, a knock between which keeps them out for like a couple of months, ten minutes apart. Do I see options like there's not really that much options in midfield right now? So I don't really blame the club if they if they say that they don't really have like name like high big enough names to come to to PSG. Yeah. I mean, if we go just by a, a scale that transitions with Tam, I would say the two. Probably heavy candidates are Bernardo Silva and Bruno Guimaraes. Bruno rated a lot by Lucho and Bernardo rated by Campos a lot. And he's been with him for a long time. So probably it's them two coming in. And obviously Xavi Simons also coming. But yeah, like with time, our transfer targets will change. As you said, these two injuries now may change how PSG go after them. But... Yeah. I, I, you know, before, David, we laughed about, yeah, it's Barca's fault. But now, David, I can 100% guarantee it's Barca's fault that their players are getting this much injured. It's 100% yeah. their fault. I mean, Dembele is just a perfect example. He hasn't gotten, like, he's had, like, ha he's been a bit hurt and we've rested him, but he hasn't had an injury. Yeah. Uh, yes, we actually bought for at this point because look at them booze. Them booze was getting injured left and right at Bars, but now I think proper management has say has like prolonged his like durability in the season and stuff. So uh hmm. uh yeah. So 
would you want to like so someone like a pedri would you want to try and risk it and, and oh, no, no, no. save him at PSG? Yeah. no you think he's cooked no no because he's individually cooked like he's like De Jong he just got one injury here one injury a bit before in the season but pedri he's just the definition of cooked okay. I, I, I wouldn't take that risk especially when you could just buy the German pedri uh, verts I mean, I don't, I don't even think we are that much in need of an offensive eight with Xavi coming because I rate Xavi extremely highly. Plus, he's a player that definitely deserves to play for this club, David. He could have left us, David. He could have left mm-hmm. us after PSV. But he chose to come back. Obviously, he wanted Nasser to loan him out because he didn't feel he was good enough. But that's a player, David, that wants to play for PSG. And... Yeah, that's true. We got to collect all of them. Especially like this Mbappe shit, it changes all of it. And when you look back at Neymar, Messi, all of these players, like I need these players that want to play for PSG badly. Like like Barcola David. Barcola David, I would never be scared of him leaving PSG. Why? Because he wanted to play for this club. He wants to accomplish the big stuff with this club. Let's see if Lenioro is the same. Let's see if the interest of Madrid affects him. Or not. If he joins us immediately, mm-hmm. we know that's that's someone that wants to be here. That's someone that wants to succeed at PSG. Like, we shouldn't be fighting for people to come to us. They should be fighting to come to us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Word, that makes sense. Like, if, if, that's why Bernardo David has always been a bit of a question mark. I know that City didn't want to let him go. That's the reason they didn't leave last summer. But come on, pressure them. I don't give a fuck that you like succeeded there and like pretty much a club legend. If you don't want to be here that much, like do we really need you that much? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I I I, I, want, I agree with you because I want more players who want to be here than rather than, rather than here for the paycheck, man. You know, I, I, I guess get yeah, get it's still it's still our work, it's still their business. But I w- I would prefer like players who just want because I don't like I don't like where I'm now second second guessing every like summer like would this player is this player would this player be here next year that's all I had Kimi now would would Hakimi follow his follow his boyfriend to go to Madrid yeah. I don't know I don't yeah. know that's a huge question mark that's gonna be over us like I'm already seeing so many PSG fans preparing for yo we should get frame punk we should get frame punk in a in a good like perfect reality world David we shouldn't be wondering about that we should be confident More that Kim is gonna extend but extend, yep. this disgusting rap behavior man yeah I mean, especially we know how he copy he copies Mbappe with everything he does so yeah yeah like a, a, a true man David he wants to create his own path he doesn't wanna follow another man's path. I mean, that's what Mbappe is doing, David. Instead of creating his own path, winning the Champions League with Paris Saint-Germain, becoming the first one in all of that, he chose to follow Ronaldo, Di Stefano, Puskas, Zidane, Figo. He chose to follow all of these other players' path instead of creating his own. And, yeah, we don't want them. Like, Vitina, yeah. David. Vitina is a player that I, I still expect more from him, especially because of his age. I mean, he's 24, even though he's really unexperienced and came, you know, he's a bit of a late bloomer, you could say. But Vitina is yeah. a guy that really wants to f- fight for PSG. Like, even when he drops stinkers, David, I know that he tries his best. It's just sometimes his best is not good enough. But I know that he always tries his best. Him learning French, taking his daughter to Disney World all the time. Like, that's someone that wants to succeed there. That's sometimes someone that wants to be called a Parisian. Yeah, I, so I, I respect Vitinha so much for what he has done. And, uh, I mean, we had the recent two games. There isn't that much to talk about, but we can end it on the, the return of Nuno Mendes, David, and how, like, we've only, we saw that Cameo versus Ren. Not that much happened. Cameo versus Monaco. Stuff happened. You, you, I'm you, a fan, isn't it? You're someone that like is a huge De Bruyne fan, and De Bruyne was out mm-hmm. for six months, I think. Yeah. And he came back, and I mean, you, you did, he, he was him. He's still him. Do, do, yeah. Now yeah. that you've watched him, would you say there's some stuff that have dropped off? Maybe his pace. Maybe. He's he's, he's still moves, 
I mean, it's not, it's different to the boy and this dude's age and age and genes. Yeah. I think the so boy right now still he he still looks like the boy, but he still looks sluggish. And again, he's coming back from like a uh, an injury kept out for majority of the season. He's still finding fitness. But I think someone like Nuno, who's much younger, it won't take that much time. I still, I still believe like Nuno will be fully Nuno by the quarters, man. I don't think right now he's still rusty because again, this is. It's still his first couple of games, but I feel like around the quarters, that's when, that's when we was trying to see like the actual Nuno like running. Because right now, because even the game when he came on, we haven't we didn't see him run like full sprints yet. Because again, mm-hmm. it's not advisable to run full sprints yet after coming back from that much because you, you don't have to like rip something again that keeps you out longer. Yeah, and especially him right now, he, he I don't think he wants to to like to be injured for a long period. Mentally. It, Mentally re- re- rehab- rehabilitation word or re- yeah the word, yeah, that word yeah, yeah. yeah we're going through rehab is is it's it's, it's, it's it's a lot man and I commend players whoever will bounce back so like I don't think he wants to, like inf- put that much stress on his body yet at this moment <laughs> but uh, yeah I thought the best move you know by the quarters man I don't think we we will see it till then yeah, there's two yeah. glimpses of it like patches but not not the best move. Because the thing for me, in especially in that Monaco cameo, David, it wasn't, you know, his ability. Like, we often talk about his ability, how he can use his pace and dribbling. For me, it's, he's so mentally strong, David. Usually when players come back from an injury, they're not that mentally strong. But Nuno still looked ice cold. Like, colder than before, David. Have you seen that cold picture when that guy tried to win a header in the air? And he just stood there? And the guy just flew to the ground? Yeah, <laughs> he's like, what is he doing? Uh, like, what is he doing? <laughs> oh, no, man, I'm so excited he's back, man. Because people like, I still believe no, I still believe no is better than Hakimi, man. Like, respectfully. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, I, 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 like, it's it's kind of sad that I mean, Hakimi is good. Like, I'm I'm not like this Hakimi, but we're not gonna act like in the har- like all those haram systems and stuff. Hakim Nuno was always cooking. Like I mean, I mean, it was Dante Mbappe playing with him and everything. Other than right wingers playing with Hakimi, but I feel like if Nuno should come back to his best, I think he blows Hakimi. He like he will actually like be way better than Hakimi. Man. Like the way Lucha is going to use this squad. Yeah, because we've, really like, seen, we've seen Hakimi do it this season without Dembele. He's looks yeah. he looks similar to Hakimi last season. Last season, yeah. He so, needed uh, Dembele. I, I, I I just can imagine Nuno and Barcola on one wing. What? Like, what? Oh, no, 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 no. Nuno and Barcola. How would, like, as a, as a, like, as an opposition right side of player, what would you do? Both will track back, both are gifted with the ball, and both, both are quick. Oh. Like, what would you do? That, that's one thing I, I didn't think about. Like, Nuno can actually push up even more than last season. Yeah. Last season was him and Mbappe. This season, he knows that if he pushes up a lot, Barcola will take that. Yeah, and Barcola knows how to defend. It's like, as a, as a right side of player, what would you do? <laughs> like, it's, it's a lot, man. So, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait, man. I'm excited, man. I'm the, very excited. Teams couldn't stop Nuno alone. Because that's the elite, the craziest thing about Nuno, David. He's, he, he's like Hakimi, fullback, but with Dembele. It's like touch, dribbling, change of pace, can can like accelerate from a standing point. Oh my god! Yeah, I hope he starts versus Sociedad. I hope, even even like sixty percent Nuno, he's still probably the best fullback in the world. Yeah, I hope he starts. I hope he stays. I hope he stays fit because we need him. We need him for the dynasty of this window, man. Oh yeah, I, I love Lucas. I, I love Lucas and and Barado, but. I miss my new man, man, because he, like, he could change the game by himself. Yeah, and especially so when we face a pressing side like Sociedad, he would be the yeah. perfect outlet because we usually use that. Hakimi gives it to Dembele, Dembele drops, and, and that opens up space. But Nuno can just get a ball, go past his first opponent, and then dribble inside, as he did versus Monaco, take away all the attention. And then Barcola is free, Dembele is free, and Bob yeah. is free, Warren is free. Yeah. I think another thing was like I don't know you remember, you remember the Juventus game that year where we oh, where yeah. we were where we were struggling and once he came on he scored a goal like he's so impactful man like his impact is his impact has no measures man you know what I mean? I'm I'm actually I'm like 
I I was I, I missed him so much this season, man. I missed him so much because the stuff he does, man, just by himself. I, I, that's why I kept raving about him because the stuff he he just adds to the squad, man. It, 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 it's not measurable, man. And it's offensive and that. offensively. Like, I remember that game you were talking yeah. about, the Juve game. I remember Cuadrado, he was actually playing well offensively versus yeah. Juan Bernat. Nuno came on. Yeah. Cuadrado. But I'm not, nothing. <laughs> nothing, man. He didn't see the ball again. Nothing, man. He didn't see the ball again. Could not do anything against Nuno, man. He thought he was still facing Bernat, who has a, a bad leg and a bad back, man. I still respect Bernat, what we've done, but yeah. <laughs> When you know it was just different gravy, man. Different, different sauce. Oh, and I remember, I mean, we made the video, what was it, like one month ago, talking about Nuno Mendes, how that would impact and switch and everything. And I've seen a report saying yeah. that Lucho is already thinking about how he's going to change the team and so on. Because I think with Nuno coming, David, we'll, I don't know if we'll still play this uh, three at the back shape. Uh, when we when we have the ball, David, because I think we played it because you know Lucas Hernandez is an inverted, like fullback, like mm-hmm. center back, left back. But with Nuno, maybe we're playing a four at the back, and we just push up. And sometimes maybe it's Lucas Hernandez and Lucas Beraldo all alone in defense. They can still defend like spaces. We need defenders that can can cover those spaces. And maybe yes, that's when but- Ugarte comes into the starting lineup. Maybe that's when. We only play with two midfielders, David. Uh, like two ball playing midfielders, and then you have Ugarte, who can just rinse up, get you fifteen recoveries, eight tackles. Per yeah, game. yeah. Now you have Nuno Casper. I mean, that's why probably that's why Ugarte comes back. I mean, people like uh, Ugarte. Like Ugarte, Ugarte I have a, like I have a soft spot for him because he's he's from he's a Luis Campos player. Yeah, and also because I, I actually enjoyed watching him from last year. Like all these players, like I like like all these players, like Gonzalo Ugarte. I, okay, I, I didn't watch Vitinha. I'm gonna act like I watched Vitinha. Was Gonzalo Ugarte? Who again? Can I say? I didn't watch. Slam put slam put me on Barcola of the bet from last year. But, but all those, but those 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 two players, I actually like watch them week in week out. Like, even like, like this is right now. I'm watching um um sporting for Quaresma, Yokeres, and someone else. I, I like watching players and seeing them how they like they blend into my squad. So like I I've seen like I, I feel like they're like my kids basically because I watched them when they were nothing and then my squad I'm I'm hoping they succeed. Yeah. It's not like Ugarte, like I see his qualities but I know I know in my heart of heart that if he doesn't improve in his ball distribution distribution like attribute, he won't succeed at PSG. He will like he won't like be the starter at PSG. But I feel like if he does get to that point, which is kind of hard because Buzz, I mean, he's still a young guy, but ball distribution, like, is, is just not a natural stuff, man. Oh it, it comes, you know, you have it there, you don't, man. I feel like if he does get that ball, that, that ball distribution, Oof. I think he's the, he'll be our, our six for the next decade, man. But that's for him, down to him and down to and his physical training and everything, and down to Lucio himself, too. To get to that period again, because got to not finish, not finish part of here. He's just 22, 21. Yeah. Like he's still like he can't drink beer. he can't drink alcohol in America like he's still a kid. I'll say he's a kid, but he's still young. So so it's down to Lucho to find the best solution to get the best out of him because it's not like there's, there's still a play. I mean he's he's finding his form, he's still he's doing, but he you can still see some lapses in the game where he doesn't suit the Lucho the Lucho build with the ball. And you see you can, you can see why you can also see why any team will want him because he'll get the recoveries back. He will stop plays in the blink of an eye. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. also the, the offensive recoveries he does. Like, we have an attack, and then one of us loses the ball, and they try, they try to pass or something, and he's just there. Intercepts the ball, boom, we have another attack. Boom, another attack. Yeah, yeah he's... Like, the pass, like, Ren and Nantes, he played really... No, Nantes and uh, Lille, he played really good, but it was like, you know, the, the usual Ugarte defensive performances. And then it was yeah. Fabiano or Vitinha next to him that was doing the ball progression. But against Monaco, he was the sole six. And he did so many great plays. I know he lost the ball like two times. Yeah. Once recovered the ball immediately, but I don't expect him to not lose the ball. I know that's not like his main strength, but the improvement mm-hmm. I saw. The switches to the yeah, side it, and, and it, just it's the confidence. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's coming back slowly, man. For me, I get the Monaco side. I didn't like how like ba- like Balogun turned him. I don't like like for me as a as a. Like, I mean, yeah, 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 I'm not saying like you, you, you shouldn't get dribble pass. It's just like in the box at that side. I feel like he shouldn't get turned there because an elite winger in Champions League will punish you by scoring a goal there. I feel like I don't want him get like he obviously he he do well in that Monaco game. I still like how you played, but I, I want more. I want more. Cause I know the level you can reach, man. I I, I like. Like I saw this man, like the thing, like the guy that I saw playing with confidence was the guy that played that played with sports in all, all of that season, and the guy that I saw dog Arsenal, dog Juventus by himself. Uh, that, that that was the guy that I saw. I I feel like if we do get that confidence to guard who's good, who I know who can do like who like if you give him the ball, he will ping the pass. He can take on his like hold the ball up for for the run, up, up on your eight to take the ball from him. If we do get him back to, we should be fine. Unless uh, and our, he's not down to our eights and ten or makeshift tens or half tens or whatever to do the rest. I still believe in Ugarte. Uh, I still, I, I still believe he has a future at PSG. Oh, he just needs to do more. Definitely. He just needs to do way, way more. Yeah, and because uh, we're, we're we're a big club, man. We, we, we have to be very demanding of our players. They can't have they, 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 no excuses, man. You play for PSG. Uh, one... Need to do more. Crucially, reports I saw like showing the differences between last season and this season is last season when a player was you know not good enough, Galtier just treated him negatively, didn't give him you know the the motivation and the stuff. Whilst Lucha, on the other hand, we can clearly see there's some players he doesn't like either because of profile or quality, but he always pushes them. He always gives them chances. He always gives them opportunities, and never slanders them in the media. Like he, when he's asked about Gonzalo, I love Gonzalo. Asked about Ugarte, I love Ugarte. Asked about even Colo, I love Colo. And I mean, maybe he's lying, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that he's not respecting players, his yeah. players in front of the media and then letting the media and the fans and everyone else eating on that. Yeah. Yeah, that was good stuff by Lucho. But I remember. There was a time Mbappe was, uh, Mbappe, not, not, to like, not to defend him, but Mbappe was like, not bad, but wasn't on level. And that, that's God said, why did Mbappe play back? He was like, because he was out, he's a parent, he, um, Messi and Neymar. I was like, you don't say that, man. I think that, that's when you robbed Mbappe the wrong way, then pivot gang that's not, not happened. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you, 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 you never do that as a manager. You can go you to the player manager. privately and, uh, private and can do whatever you want. But in front of the media, yeah. like they're asking those questions to get drama. They're not asking them to get, to get an honest answer. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they're not doing that to get drama. They're not doing like for, to help you or anything. They're just trying to start. They're trying to get clicks and make money. And yeah. you just get you. I like how in the, the interview today, they asked Lucho a question like, do you think um I, I don't remember for for Bergen, but like word for word, but it went in the sense that they asked Lucho, do you would you play? Do you think your team can play how he plays in League One without the Bapa he does in Champions League? And Lucho said, and Lucho replied back in Spanish that even the translator doesn't understand what we're trying to say. Make the question easy to you and me, so I can I can talk to you. He, like he, the way he answers your question, he clowns the reporter and makes he avoids he avoids like starting drama, unnecessary drama. Man. I think. On, on like I think to the Mbappe's um renewal stuff. So sorry, not renewal, leaving PSG. PSG has not really had that much that drama in the news, man. It's, it has been very, very compared to the other seasons where we had like the Juju Pogba, the Messi and Neymar Neym- Neym- going for his carnival, M- Messi doing this, Mbappe yeah. doing that. So yeah, so he's been quiet for a long time. It's a, it's a little down to the manager because he doesn't like he doesn't say a lot, man. He just he just says enough. You don't you, you don't talk enough a lot. You just just say enough. If that makes sense. One hundred percent. Yeah, I think yeah. before the press conferences used to be where you just you know you say the true answers, your feelings, and so on. But now in twenty twenty four, press conferences are made to destroy the manager, take down his confidence, uh, see if there are any weaknesses in him. Like when you look at Pep David. Pip never takes a, a, a journalist serious. Sometimes he even cooks him. I saw uh, a short where 
they asked him about his job or something. And he said, my job is better than yours. <laughs> he just <laughs> cooks the reporter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think some, some like Pep, like every like because he, he coaches for Man City, everyone's trying to like get him out. Like you know, it was asking about the charges and stuff. Like just like diminishing, and he just he just doesn't doesn't listen to them because he knows what he's achieved. And he and he backs his talk, man. I mean, I, remember, I don't know you, you you probably didn't watch the Man City documentary, but Mm-mm. he he, was, he he said himself that in, doc, in the documentary he was like um that everybody hates him. Cause why he destroyed football? He he came to the he came to the Premier League. That everybody was like like cause before before Pep, the Premier League was like the league that you you never you, you could never predict who's gonna win this year, or next year, yeah. or whatever. Pep came in and he, after in the last seven years he won six out of seven. Like he, he said he came to the Premier League and he destroyed football, and that's why everybody hates him. So he said like so he's that confident. Man. I I love that like Lucho has that confidence as well. In that sense. Yeah, because you don't, you don't the gods here, who 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 start crying, who start crying to a player like Messi and saying, uh, actually Neymar, Neymar, and, um, who again, Kelly Navas to make amends for him, because he benched Messi. I don't want the coward as a manager, man. I want the man as a manager, man, like an alpha man. One hundred percent. Yeah, and, and I mean, even you, you brought up Messi. Who was the person that humbled Messi? It was Lucho. <laughs> it was Lucho. Even yeah. Pep didn't humble Messi like Lucho did. Lucho just. Because Lucho is either his way or no way. He's not going to adapt for a player. He's not going to adapt for an opposition. And he may lose games like that. We may get knocked out from the Champions League like that. But that's his way. And I would rather have a manager that just wants what he gets, does what he wants, has the confidence in himself. And as you said, Galtier, (laughs) he, he was playing like attractive, offensive football. But then when we played Bayern, he played like we're nice. <laughs> Parking the bus with the four four two at home. I... That was the worst thing ever. Yeah, that was, that was sad, man. But better times coming. Sociedad coming up tomorrow. Um, obviously, people will be watching this uh, straight before the game if you're listening to this. Quick predictions, David. We'll obviously take, uh, talk more about this later on, but quick predictions. Uh, I, I actually again, I don't like, I don't, know, I don't know the injury situation. I don't know how much injuries they have and stuff. Oh, they're missing four say, role players. Like Tierney is back, Becker is back, Oyarzabal is back. Tierney not, no, not bro. predicted to start though. It's still that Galando. Oh, oh, I, I, I saw Traore, the right back. Is he, is he injured? I thought he was injured. He, he just came. He he's going to start. Yeah, yeah. They also uh, so rested like so a lot of players in their last uh, defeat to Sevilla. So basically, that 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 best eleven is back, basically. Yeah. Uh, I'll give. Them, I'll say two on PSG. Two on PSG. Two on. Two on PSG. I'm going with three one. Hopefully more, because David, the last two games were draws. And the last game, we rested a lot, lot, lot of players. You can even include Mbappe as a player that was rested. We <laughs> rested them for a reason, all right? We didn't win versus Monaco for a reason. We played nonchalant football versus Rennes for a reason, for this game. So if I don't see a masterclass, like we're already through. Like, I don't care about Sociedad. If I don't see a masterclass, I'm going to have problems. But yeah, I- I'm say 3-1. I'm say 3-1. I think it would be really comfortable. And yeah, I mean, we, we still get no props after we win. People would be like, yeah, PSG should win. They have a much larger budget. Or oh, with players like Mbappé, you should be beating low tier Sociedad or 10th in La Liga. Just a bum ass excuse, as always. Um, but that's been it for PSG Monthly Episode 2. Hopefully, if you, David, have enjoyed it. It was a great uh, discussion. Yeah. Went into great time, great time. Many different topics, and, and yeah, people, if you enjoyed this, make sure to, I don't know, share it, like it, as you guys want. And uh, yeah, episode three should be out around the end of this month, discussing everything that's happened. That's been it. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to show your enjoyance. And as usual, allez, 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 Paris. Allez, Paris.